With the discovery of this unexpected link between space and time, Einstein realized that the two could no longer be thought of as separate things. Instead, space and time are fused together in what came to be called space-time. Einstein unified the idea of space with the idea of time into this four-dimensional structure called space-time. And this fusion of space and time would lead Einstein to perhaps the most mind-bending realization of all, the sharp difference we see between past, present, and future may only be an illusion. Welcome back to the Lex Files. I'm Lex Benjamin, and we're talking about free will again. Free will and time, that is. Now, what we know about time is that time is inextricably linked with space. We call it space-time. Einstein has proven this pretty definitively, and we now know that we can no longer think about time as a flowing, unchanging river of happening. We now know that time is changeable, it's mutable, with movement through space. And if we have any reservations, any apprehensions about accepting our newfound understanding of time, our modern conception of time, all we have to do is Google a couple of articles on GPS satellites and we'll see that the United States military and physicists have effectively proven with the satellites in orbit that time is a mutable, changeable thing with momentum, speed, or I guess velocity through space, whatever you want to call that. But we're going to wrap our heads around that in another video. For this video, what does time itself have to do with free will? Does it limit? Does it hinder? Does it enable free will? Well, we're going to get into that. In our day-to-day -day lives, we experience time as a continuous flow. But it can also be useful to think of time as a series of snapshots or moments. And everything that happens can be thought of as the unfolding of moment after moment after moment. And if we picture all moments or snapshots lined up, every moment here on Earth, every moment of Earth orbiting the sun, and every moment throughout the entire universe, we would see every event that has ever happened or will ever happen. Every location in space and each and every moment in time. Thinking about space-time like this led Einstein to overturn our everyday picture of past, present, and future. If we think about time as a collection of moments instead of a flowing river, we can imagine stacking those moments together to create the entirety of reality, not just for the period of time that humans have existed before all time. Now, of course, from our experience, the future and the past are non-real things, but just like our experience of color, is not a thing that is physically or naturally existent in nature itself. It's something that we create in our mind. Our experience of time may be similar. It may be an illusion similar to our experience of color in the fact that it is not a thing that exists. It is a thing that we create, the experience of flow, that is. These and all other events that I think are happening at the same moment in time, but in different regions of our universe, make up what I intuitively think of as now. You can picture them as lying on a single slice of space-time. Let's call it a now slice. Common sense would say that you and I and everyone else will agree on what's happening or what exists right now, moment after moment after moment. That is, we would all agree on what lies on a given now slice. But Einstein showed that, strangely, when you take motion into account, this common sense picture of time goes out the window. So we probably don't have free will. Why? Because what we consider now is not the same universally for all observers. Let's just say that two observers separated by a great enough distance will disagree on what is experienceable or what is knowable to each one of them, even though they are technically existing in the same period in time. Kind of weird, right? What he considers is happening right now on Earth no longer includes our friend at the gas station or even 40 years earlier when our friend was a baby. Amazingly, the alien's now slice has swept back through 200 years of Earth history and 
now includes events that we consider part of the distant past, like Beethoven finishing the Fifth Symphony. Even at a relatively slow speed, we can have actually tremendous disagreements on our labeling of now, what happens at the same time, uh, if we're spread out far enough uh, in space. And if that's not strange enough, the direction you move makes a difference too. Watch what happens when the alien turns around and bikes toward Earth. The alien's new now slice is angled toward the future. And so it includes events that won't happen on Earth for 200 years. If what I'd experience now is what you now would call your future, then to me now your future is a real and existing reality. Your future to me is just now. The same is true for your past. Your past or your future, if knowable or experienceable by something or someone, are real and true realities. They exist. We know that your now can be what I consider the past, or your now can be what I consider the future, and your now is every bit as valid as my now. Then we learn that the past must be real. The future must be real. They could be your now. That means past, present, future, all equally real. They all exist. If you believe the laws of physics, there's just as much reality to the future and the past as there is to the present moment. The past is not gone, and the future isn't non-existent. The past, the future, and the present are all existing in exactly the same way. Just as we think of all of space as being out there, we should think of all of time as being out there too. Everything that has ever happened or will happen, it all exists. When these ideas seem like too big of a stretch, we have to remind ourselves of how we interact with our reality. Most things that we see, we don't actually touch. Most of our interactions with our environment are visually using light. We don't physically contact most things in the immediate moment. And that's the way we see most of the universe. So if a distant observer is watching you watch YouTube in what would be two years into your past, then they are experiencing a real reality, a reality that is likely going to be known to some observer for most of the universe's lifespan. So that's just something to give you pause that in your immediate moment, you contact your immediate surroundings. However, you are aware and interacting with and experiencing your environment far more distant, far more vast than what you can physically. Now, the distances that we experience on a day to day basis are small enough for us to close the gaps between our visual experience and our physical contact pretty quickly. But that should not give us any that should not, I guess, mislead us or lead us astray into thinking that what we experience here is different than what we're talking about in the videos. All we're doing is just stretching the scales for exaggeration effect so that we can see some of the more subtle underlying happenings in our physical reality so that we can make sense of them. Things that would be too minuscule and too minute to conceptualize on day to day scales become more broad, more expansive, more dramatic on universal scales just for effect's sake. With this bold insight, Einstein shattered one of the most basic concepts of how we experience time. The distinction between past, present, and future, he once said, is only an illusion, however persistent. But if every moment in time already exists, then how do we explain the very real feeling that time, like this river, seems to endlessly rush forward? Well, maybe we've been deceived and time does not flow. Perhaps the river of time is more like a frozen river. With every moment forever locked in place, all time existing for you and the universe, always. The past, the present, and the future existing simultaneously ruins our hope for free will. Why? Because we know, as I said on the last video, whether we're talking about determinism or probabilistic determinism from the Copenhagen interpretation, whatever you want to draw out of quantum mechanics, what we know about reality, what we know about existence 
is that a known thing is a real thing. We know that if we can know your future, then your future is a reality. Why? Because a known thing is a fact. To know something to a certainty means that you know everything about it and there's nothing that can be changed or you're changing the thing that you're speaking of. So knowing something to a certainty, knowing your future to a certainty means that your future is immutable. It's unchangeable and we have no chance of free will. This the same way for your past. Your past was what it was. Your future is what it will be. And we have no effect, no hope for influencing that. And this isn't meant to depress anybody. This I mean, obviously, there's still some arguments and some hope for free will in some other ways that we'll get into. But this is just to show that we need to rethink our view of reality of ourselves and I guess get rid of the false floor, the false foundation on the way we move through this world and build a better one, a more solid one, one that may not be comfortable initially, but one that'll stand a greater test of time for fact, truth, and I guess, I guess any type of argument to be made against it. We want to know what reality is as best as we can so that we can move forward with confidence that we are building up on a stable foundation. And that's really all we want to do with these videos. That's all we want to do with our lives and our understanding. So thank you for watching this video. Thank you for watching all the videos. As always, like and subscribe.